Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome to Trending Reviews. So I have here today the S9 Plus. Now, I'm going to be going through some of the features around the camera. But just to give you a quick update on the S9 Plus, it's not exactly a redesign from the Samsung S8. It's more of a refinement. Now, a couple of things to note around the design changes. The fingerprint scanner is now at the back in the middle. It used to be right next to the lenses on the top left hand corner. I think around the size, I've noticed that it's a little bit more of a matte finish rather than a metallic finish. If you compare the S8 to the S9, it's probably going to be around almost identical. In terms of the specs, the RAM is increased a little bit. There's not a huge amount of changes in this uh, S9 Plus. However, Samsung did come out with a various set of colors that this phone can come in. One of them is coral blue, one of them is a lilac purple, and they'll also be selling a metallic silver. But I went ahead and just got the black one because I think the black looks a little bit nicer. But one thing to note, they still have that glass finish at the back. Now one thing to note is that once you get the phone straight out of the box, it immediately gets fingerprints all over it. So it's not something that you'd continue using without any case or a dbrand skin or so on. Now it still has a headphone jack. For me personally, I think that's quite useful. I don't like to carry around the dongle that you get with most phones as an adapter. I've always had wired headphones. I do have some wireless headphones as well, but I think it's not a major problem for phone companies to leave the headphone jacks in there. It allows me to also charge my phone and to listen to music at the same time when I'm at work. Maybe the phone is on a desk or so on. One other thing worth mentioning is that the phone now has Dolby Atmos surround sound. Now I know Samsung audio has generally been quite good, but having the Dolby surround sound inbuilt into the speakers, I think is a really good step for Samsung. When you're listening to the audio, you could even feel the vibrations when watching the shows or movies on your phone, which I think is pretty awesome so that you can get that cinematic feeling towards watching stuff on your phone, which a lot of people sometimes don't tend to do. They probably watch on their laptops and so on. Now today I'm gonna to be focusing more on the S9 Plus camera. Now Samsung have gone all out. They've got this dual camera on the S9 Plus, which can automatically adjust the wide lens aperture to get a really focused, and they've developed a camera lens that can automatically adjust the wide lens aperture to a really focused in aperture within an instant. Now, if you know anything about photography, you know that's pretty revolutionary, especially on a smartphone. The camera, once you put it into pro mode, you can switch between f1.5 and f2.4 with the lens at the back visibly switching between those two different modes. Now, what that means in layman terms is, is that f1.5, it will let in a lot more light so that allows you to take better pictures in, in low lighting or even in the dark as well. And at f2.4, it narrows in and focuses on objects, allowing you to capture sharper details at close range. So let's go ahead and take a look at that now. Okay, so the good thing I like about the camera now is that it has more of a swipe feature to go through all of the different modes within the camera. So all you have to do is just swipe left and right and you'll see the different options come up there at the top. So this is a live focus mode. It allows you to blur the background and take depth effects photos whilst looking at it exactly how it will look like before you take the photo. You can even adjust the background blur and see how that looks before you take the picture. If you go into pro mode, this is where you can see the different options for changing the aperture, the lighting, the, the wide angles and so on. So there's an option here. So you press the aperture button, it brings up the f1.5 there. You select that, it changes it to 2.4. You keep tapping it, it will change backwards and forwards. Now, if you look at the back, by switching between f1.5 and f2.4, you can see the lens actually closing in and opening up depending on which aperture you've selected. Now this is the first time this has ever been done on a smartphone and I think Samsung have done a really good job here. Now let's talk about the super slow-mo recording here. So this is the first phone ever to video record at a huge 960 frames per second. But just note that this is only done at 720p and in most lighting situations you'll find that it's a little bit grainy. Sometimes if you do it in low lighting situations it'll be so grainy that it's sometimes hard to watch but it continues to do 240 frames per second at 1080p as well. So let's go ahead and give an example of this slow-mo recording. So there's two options here. You can record either in manual or auto modes. In manual, you'll have to set record at the exact same time that you see 
the action happening and it has to happen within that square box that it's given you. Now you can move the square box around depending on where you're going to record the slow motion or you can set it to auto mode here on the bottom left so that it automatically picks up fast motion that happens within that square box and it will set the recording to happen automatically. Now just note that the recording is about 0.2 seconds so it has to be really fast and it plays it over about 6 seconds as well so let's go ahead and see what that looks like. So just playing back the footage you can actually see it's not too bad. It is a little bit blurry but it also depends on the lighting as well so if I did this outdoors I reckon it would be a little bit more sharper. If I had more lighting indoors on me it would probably be a little bit more sharper as well. But overall I think it's done a really good job and I think the 960 frames per second is a real win for Samsung. And then you have the AR emoji feature. So you swipe down to AR emoji. So this is Samsung's answer to Apple's N emoji. This does seem a little bit like a gimmick at the moment, but for those people who have a Bitmoji on Snapchat, for example, they may play around with this a little more than those that don't. But nonetheless, it seems like it's something cool that you'll probably just end up playing for around maybe the first week or so, and then probably never go back to it. But nonetheless, let's have a look. You can uh, create your own emoji. It brings up a selfie camera, so if you just take a picture, you select mail, next, it starts to generate the emoji, let's see how close it is, this probably looks nothing like me, but probably done a not too far off job. It saves the stickers in your gallery as well if you want it to. So what this allows you to do is if you want to send a message, you go into messages, you have the option to select your AR emoji. There's various different options here. Let's go and select that one. And it just does a little animation for you there. Now finally, Samsung got rid of the selective focus mode and replaced it with this live focus mode. There's also a selfie focus mode for those who want to get a portrait picture from the front facing camera, which I think is still far behind the portrait modes that you find on the iPhone X and the Google Pixel 2. So Samsung really have to up their game in the portrait photography market, which to me is a little bit disappointing. But let's go ahead and look at the live focus mode and see what that looks like. You have to move a little bit further away from the subject like it mentions there. So let me go ahead and move this a little bit further back. So now it will tell you that it's ready with the yellow button there. So you can go ahead and blur as much as you want, less as you want. So let's go ahead and take that picture. Let's go with less blur. Now just taking a look at the pictures now, you're able to choose between wide angle and close up as well. It basically saves both options when you take a live focus picture so that you can choose between both of them whichever came out better. So I think if you look closely, it's done a pretty good job blurring the background here on the little baby Groot. I still think the Google Pixel 2 XL portrait mode is a little bit better, a little bit sharper. It's able to capture the background a little bit nicer than uh, this one, but it's a nice attempt from Samsung. I think I will continue to use this and explore this a little bit more. So make sure to subscribe, I'm going to do a photography test with my Google Pixel 2 against the camera on the S9 Plus and give you comparisons with portrait modes and other various modes as well. So just keep an eye out for that. Overall, I think the camera is definitely a step in the right direction. So far, it seems to be the best camera on the market today. There's probably a little bit of a debate between the camera on the S9 Plus and the Google Pixel XL. Am I convinced enough to switch from my Google Pixel 2 XL back to the Samsung S9 Plus? Probably not just yet, but I'll be keeping an eye out on the Samsung software updates to see if they do improve the camera, especially to utilize the S9 Plus lenses, which I'm kind of looking forward to. So definitely watch this space. All right guys, thanks for watching the video. I hope you liked the camera review on the S9 Plus. If you have any questions, let me know what you think in the comments below. As usual, make sure you subscribe. I've got a lot more features and reviews coming up for the S9. And I will catch you guys next time. Take care.